Hello and welcome to the third and last lesson of this free course series that I've made for you guys. This is the last lesson. <laughs> if you've missed the first two lessons, I went through how to paint environments and how to use colour in your artworks. You can head there and watch those first because I think they'll be really helpful for you if you're interested in elevating your environment art and looking towards like improving your colour usage in your artworks. In this lesson we're going to be talking about how to draw and paint from imagination and kind of my thought process and things that help me to paint from imagination because it is a very difficult <laughs> thing sometimes. The whole process of trying to paint what you're imagining in here onto the page in front of you can be a very frustrating thing because you're just like why does this not look like how it is in here? <laughs> I'm going to share with you some tips of how you can improve drawing from imagination. So let's get into it. Let's get into today's lesson today, which is how to paint from imagination. And this is one of my favorite topics to talk about because it's so, so exciting. If you don't know me, hi, my name is Jess. I'm an artist that specializes in painting environments and storytelling, artworks and world building. I've been freelancing for over six years now. I created this series to help any of you guys out that are artists that want to elevate your painting skills. Today I wanted to share with you about tips and methods of how to paint from imagination and how to get good from painting from imagination. I hope after this lesson you will be equipped with some tools to be able to use when you paint from imagination next time. So painting from imagination, the thing is as artists we are visual people and the frustrating part though if you're an artist you should be able to relate to this because it's one of the most frustrating parts of like our lives, right? Being able to paint what we're imagining in our minds and putting it onto the canvas in front of us as accurately as possible. That transition from our mind to the canvas in front of us is so frustrating <laughs> because everything that we paint, we would look at it and be like, this is not what I imagined it like. <laughs> Why does this not look as beautiful as it did in my mind? <laughs> um, <laughs> So, and I think we all experience that. These methods that I'm going to share with you, I hope will help relieve some of that frustration and make it a little bit more easier or to make you more inspired to paint from imagination. Let's go through them. The first thing you can do to elevate painting from imagination is build a strong visual library. And what I mean by this is that every artist we are all equipped with a visual library, which is kind of like our memory, our image memory of the world that we see around us. And every artist is completely different. So for example, if you're a character artist, your visual library of human anatomy would be very, very strong. That's what I'm referring to when I think of a visual library. Or another example would be a creature designer. Their visual library of animals, reptiles, birds, fish would be so strong. Depending on the artist, another subject matter might have a less diverse visual library. So say it's a creature designer, but their visual library of what say Japanese houses would be, would be a little bit not, it would be not as strong maybe as their visual library of animals. That's what I'm referring to when, when I talk about visual library. And when we paint from imagination, we draw from our visual library that we have equipped with us. The way to build this visual library is studying. <laughs> study, 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 looking at reference and looking at the world around you and building and accumulating that art mileage that will make you stronger as an artist. Like building your visual library would be studying the things that interest you or studying the areas of your visual library that aren't as strong or aren't as vivid when you picture them in your mind as other areas. Let's use me as an example, I guess. I'm an environment artist, so my visual library of environments is quite strong, I, I could say. It's not completely strong, it's not perfect, <laughs> but it's relatively strong. So I know what a, I know what Japanese houses look like. I know what an Australian landscape looks like. I know what forests and its lighting looks like. I know how to paint trees. I know what trees look like. I know what rocks look like. A lot of things related to environments. I am very confident because I have a strong visual library of it. However, 
my visual library of human anatomy, definitely not as strong. Definitely not as strong. And that is because it's an area that I'm still currently working on and studying. In terms of like human anatomy and doing character design, that is an area that my visual library is a lot weaker. So that's where we, in the area that our visual library isn't as strong as, that's when we would build it stronger. And we do that by studying, 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 and looking at references, referring to our references, and being very, very diligent with our practice. So that is the first tip, is to build up your strong visual library in the area of interest that you want to paint from imagination. The second tip that I have to help you paint better from imagination is you need to practice fundamental drawing skills, or you need to be equipped with fundamental drawing skills. As an artist, you don't want your skills holding you back from creating your amazing ideas. I like to use the analogy of music, I guess. So it would be like if you want to play beautiful music on a violin. If you don't know how to read sheet music, or you don't know how to hold the violin properly, or you don't know how to hold the bow properly, you don't know how to put your bow on the strings and create that clear note, then you're going to get stuck. You're going to continue to play the violin in a very beginnerish way, and you won't even get to the stage where you can have fun with it, which kind of sucks, right? However, once you have practiced and you've learnt how to read sheet music, how to hold the instrument properly, and how to play, then that's when your creativity comes through because you have the skills then to be able to give your unique energy into what you're playing. It's exactly the same deal with art. Another way of putting it, I guess, is it's kind of like if you're building a house. You can't build and construct a house without the house plan or like the blueprint, right? You need to have that drawn up properly. If you don't have that house plan drawn up properly, then, I mean, your house could collapse. You're <laughs> like, you would, it might be missing a couple of things that might make the whole structure fall apart. It will just, it would have a very weak foundation. It won't last as long either. However, once you've got the foundation done, once you know how to build the house plan correctly and properly, and you get used to that same process and methodology, you get faster at building the house plan. And by getting faster at building the house plan and getting more familiar with that process, then that's when you're able to get very creative with it. You're able to make your house all these really cool colors and you can design the shape of the roof differently and the, you can add an extra room in the back and that's when you can give it your own uniqueness. This is exactly the same thing as being equipped with drawing fundamental skills for your art. I kind of put it as like, if you want to draw a house, <laughs> this time we're drawing a house. If you want to draw a house, you need to be able to draw a cube because a house is just a bunch of cubes put together, right? If you don't know how to draw a cube, then you can't draw a house. And to be able to draw a cube, you need to be able to draw a straight line, right? Because a cube is just a combination of straight lines put together to create the structure of a cube. If you don't know how to draw a straight line, how on earth are you going to be able to draw a house? You can't jump to the finish line when you don't know how to even start properly. Same, same dealio. <laughs> so that is why drawing fundamentals are very important. Being able to draw straight lines, understand perspective, understand composition, how to use focal point, how to see shape around you and be able to break down everything that you see into a basic shape that, so that you're able to draw it. Those skills are so, so crucial because drawing fundamentals, I guess you could say they're a theory, right? It's not like you have to learn them, but it's a theory that has been around for so many centuries in art. And once you know the theory, once you know the rules, you have the liberty and the freedom to be able to break them. And that's when you can get creative. That's when you can make crazy perspective drawings. That's when you can create compositions that are challenging and different. So that's why practicing and polishing your fundamental drawing skills is very crucial, I think, and will be really helpful for when you want to paint from imagination. And if you need help polishing up your drawing fundamental skills, I actually have a solution for that if you need help with that. And it's called mentorships. <laughs> I'm opening spots up for art mentorships this Thursday, actually, on the 7th of January. I'm taking on winter term students who want to start their year with some guidance. Because 
I've been mentoring artists actually for the past couple of years alongside my freelance work and I've taught and mentored students and artists who needed help with their fundamentals, those that wanted to push to build a strong portfolio and those who wanted to know just how to get work as well. If that is something that you're interested in and you really need someone to guide you and help you with your fundamental drawing skills, take an art mentorship with me because it'll be really, really fun. I mean, I structure the entire mentorship to suit your art goals and we kind of look in at your strengths and weaknesses. And learning drawing fundamentals is also, it can be boring and a bit tedious. <laughs> That's why like a lot of artists try to skip over this part of art and they try jumping into the whole creating and designing thing when really fundamentals is the part where you really need to learn how to build the house plan before you build the house. And I can teach you that step by step and it'll be fun because we'll be doing it together. I started from square one as well, so I can teach you all the exercises and practices that helped me and I know that they'll help you too. So if you're looking into brushing up on your fundamental drawing skills, take an art mentorship with me. The links will be down below if you're interested in that. And then the third tip, which is my last tip basically, and it's actually probably the most fun one to talk about, <laughs> is getting inspiration in your own unique way. And the last part of this is very crucial, getting it in your own unique way. When I refer to getting inspiration, I mean getting it in a different way that doesn't mean Googling or Pinteresting images all the time for image references. Getting inspiration is completely subjective to each one of us. We are all inspired by different things in the world and we all have different things that inspire us to be able to create. And about remembering and honoring the ways that we inspire ourselves, that's when we're able to come up with really cool ideas and really imaginative things that we can paint and create. Here are my tips of how to get inspiration. One of them is meditation. <laughs> meditation. Um, that's probably one that you might not have heard many artists talk about because maybe it's not a popular thing to meditate. The reason why I say meditation is that as artists, we do have busy minds. And to be able to calm down our mind, in meditation, we can come across like such beautiful imagery that we would have never come across if we were just living with our talking brain. Meditation, I kind of relate it to like, imagine if you're in, you're working at home, right? And you've got the air conditioning on. It's making this very soft sound while it's running. And after a while, the longer you have the air conditioning on, the easier it is that you start to realize like you can't hear it anymore. But once you turn the air conditioning off, that silence that comes after you've turned it off is so clear and is so full of clarity. That is kind of what meditation is. Our thoughts are the air conditioning in the room that is making that rackety noise. And it's only after we turn our thoughts off, that's when suddenly clarity gives way to inspiration. That's when silence and just no thoughts, it can be the pathway to such amazing inspiration. That's my first tip. The next way of getting inspiration is also just real life. Just taking recognition of what is in real life. First, I would have said that this tip would be traveling, but you know, at this current point in time, we can't really do that. <laughs> but that doesn't mean that it should restrict us. We should be inspired by real life, the things that are around us right now, because what is around us right now can be, you know, really special. And all it takes is noticing what we are in. So for example, right now I'm just being in, you know, I'm in my apartment, my little Japanese apartment, and looking instead at my balcony that is full of plants. And now I just want to paint my balcony because it's actually so beautiful, full of all these plants that we created this beautiful balcony, this little nature haven here. So that is what I mean by looking at life that is around you, that you're already in, and taking inspiration from that. And then the last tip that I have for getting inspiration in your own unique way is surrounding yourself with other artists and being part of a group or a little community that inspires each other. And I say little community, like quite specifically too. It's when you're part of like a big community, it's, I feel like it's sometimes hard to be heard, right? 
and you might get lost in the crowd. But when you're part of a very small group and you're with other people that actually care about what you're doing, about what you're creating, it has a completely different dynamic and you get so inspired by each other. You learn from each other, you see what your other fellow artists are creating and bouncing. you can bounce ideas off of each other. It's just amazing. I mean, we are introverts at heart, most of us, I think, as artists, but connection with others is such a beautiful aspect, I think, of being an artist. And in the end, what we're creating, art, it's going to connect to someone as well. So being able to connect to others is just as important too. So that's my yeah other tip of how to get inspiration in your own unique way. And that is it, really. <laughs> that is um, my process of how to paint from imagination and what things help me to paint from imagination. I hope this was helpful for you and it has given you some ideas of how to integrate it into your creative process. Let me know and let me know if you have any questions too. And again, if you're interested in polishing up your drawing fundamental skills and pushing your art, take an art mentorship with me. If you want someone to show your work to, to get critique, to teach you like fundamental exercises or help you build a portfolio, I think this will be perfect for you because it's all online. The mentorship is completely shaped to your pace and to hit your goals. It's a lot of hard work, to be honest, but I'll be there. I'll be there to look at all your work, give you critiques, exercises, paint overs, and share with you everything that has helped me get to where I am today with art because I want to push your art to a level too so that you can live from it as well. So mentorship seats, they're available this January the 7th. Um, which is in a couple of days, actually. So put it in your calendar. I'm telling you guys now, in case you want to get in early before I kind of make it a bit more public. I can only take on a limited number of students too. So once the spots are gone, they're gone. And I won't be able to take on new students until April. <laughs> so yeah, just thought I'd let you know. Take an art mentorship with me. 7th of January, put it in your calendar. It's going to be really, really cool. And I hope you join because... If that's something that resonates with you, I think it will really suit you and help your art goals. Thanks very much, and I'll see you next time. Keep drawing, keep improving, and always keep creating. See you next time. Bye.